Well, as I mentioned before, it took 2,000 years to completely verify the atomic theory. Now we have pictures, pictures taken from scanning tunneling microscopes, but in between, there were many partial results that gave us indirect proof of the existence of atoms. Einstein, in 1905, was able to show, uh, using statistical mechanics, that atoms were probably the size of that, that we think they are today, 10 to the minus 8 centimeters, and it took time. And so I think not in one flash we're going to prove that the multiverse theory is correct or that string theory is correct, but the overwhelming weight of evidence will point in that direction. And let me make another challenge, another challenge to everybody in this room. You are free to not like any of these theories, but if you don't like these theories, propose your own. The second law of thermodynamics says that it's always more difficult to create a theory than to destroy a theory. You can dislike any of these theories that we talked about today, but I challenge you, come up with a better one. Well, there's an excellent opportunity to introduce Roger into this uh, conversation. <laughs> well, I'm not a particle physicist, so I don't claim to have a better theory than string theory, although I'm pretty disappointed by the conclusions. I mean, just to mention how other theories have taken a long time to confirm and so on, tells me nothing about string theory. I mean, string theory proposes the wrong number of dimensions of space, for instance. It proposes the wrong sign for the cosmological constant, for instance. All sorts of things which have come out of string theory are just wrong. Now, you could get round this in one way or another. I know people like to tuck all these extra dimensions into a little tiny ball. They haven't answered the question that I've often raised in my books about that, which is that it doesn't really solve the problem. I mean, there are big, huge problems facing string theory. I, th I don't quite know why we're talking about this as with the multiverse anyway, because string theory is just is a particular theory which I don't think has much in the way of support for it. It's got a lot of people who argue for it, but that's not scientific support. There aren't experiments which support string theory. But that's really a different question from the multiverse, isn't it? Are we, are we talking about string theory or the multiverse here? I'm not sure. Well, both. Uh, string theory has been criticized for being a multiverse theory. Oh. But uh, I don't mind, because if you, even if you take a look at Newton's laws of motion, they are also, in some sense, a theory with an infinite number of possible solutions. If string theory has an infinite number of solutions, well, so does Newton's laws. Maxwell's equations, they all have an infinite number of solutions, but how do you make sense of it? By looking at the initial conditions. That's how you can prove that Newton's theory is correct, by starting with a baseball, starting with a rocket. Same thing with string theory. You start with the initial conditions of the universe, and then you can project into the future. The problem is experimental. We do not know the initial conditions of the universe. Therefore, we cannot directly compare it to a multiverse theory. But that's an experimental question, which I think will be answered as we have more and more satellites detect things like gravity waves in outer space. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.